Well, it's tough to keep up with advances in medical surgical technology, specifically in robotics and minimally invasive surgery for scoliosis. Here to explain more is surgeon Dr. Glenn Russo with Hartford Healthcare St. Vincent's Medical Center Orthopedics Department. Doctor, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, great to have you. So for those not familiar with it, tell us what is scoliosis? So scoliosis really is an abnormal curvature of the spine. Most cases are very mild and a lot of people don't even have symptoms associated with them. Um, for patients who do have symptoms, sometimes they benefit from things like physical therapy, injections. Um, for more severe cases with significant symptoms, some people even benefit from surgery. But the important thing to remember is that scoliosis affects children and adults very differently. And that was my next question. What is the difference between scoliosis in adults compared to children? Yeah, so we, we think about it differently. You know, in kids, you know, when we, when we see a child in the office with scoliosis, one of the first things we need to do is we need to understand is something driving that scoliosis, is something causing it. Because about 20% of the time, things like cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, spina bifida, and other issues can, can be causing scoliosis. More commonly, about 80% of the time, we're not able to identify an underlying cause. But children don't really present with pain. They present with a curve that's been appreciated by their pediatrician or found in school. Um, for the more mild curves, you know, sometimes we just observe them. For the more moderate curves, sometimes they benefit from bracing. And the more significant curvatures, sometimes they might benefit from a surgery. But the goal of our treatment for children is really to get them to reach skeletal maturity with a stable spine that's not going to cause them problems down the road. Okay, doctor, what are the most recent advancements when it comes to surgical treatments for scoliosis? So there's been, there's been a lot of different treatments um, that have developed over the years, um, and we've recently come, come a long way. Um, you know, probably some of the most important advancements have come with our understanding of spinal deformity and scoliosis. It allows us to identify uh, different parameters that are associated with patients' quality of life and patients' functional outcome. And as a, result, as a result of that, we're able to create a surgical plan to directly affect those parameters and give a more re reliable surgical result. But there's several other things. At, at St. Vincent's, one of the technologies that's really blossomed is the use of these erector spinae blocks, which incredibly uh, uh, resulted in an incredible impact on patients' post-operative pain. There's less narcotic use, a faster recovery. It's been a real game changer. That sounds um, great. All right, doctor, we're almost out of time. I want to ask you, you're the senior author of a published paper on safe spine surgery during this pandemic. So how do you safely perform spinal surgery in the time of COVID? So there's, there's a lot of different precautions that we take. You know, I think the most important thing is an honest assessment with your, with your physician to assess the risks and benefits of a particular surgery, as well as um, the time sensitive nature of a surgery. Um, as not all procedures are, you know, uh, as urgent as others. We screen patients before surgery, um, and it's important for patients that while they're awaiting the result of that COVID screening test, that they self-isolate, because the last thing you'd want to do is, is expose someone while you're waiting for a test that could end up to be positive. Um, there's a lot of other tools that we utilize with uh, triaging patients to the safest area and minimizing patients and staff exposure during high-risk procedures. But probably the most important tool we have uh, is really just going to be patience, kindness, and understanding. All right, Dr. Glenn Russo, thank you so much for joining us. We are out of time, but we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That'll do it for News 8.